Welcome, beautiful people, to the Soul Ashraya podcast, a weekly bhakti podcast. We will seek the shelter and wisdom of our dear Lord Krishna with Shastra, prayer, and conversation. I am your enlightened host, sometimes enlightened host, Bhakti Jake, and I am joined with my friend, my dear friend and teacher, Balaram Shakti Das of the Tucson, Arizona Temple. Thank you so much for being here. And we are joined, of course, by our little helper who will go unnamed at this point. <laughs> but we love her too. <laughs> Balaram, how are you? Doing good. What are you wearing today? <laughs> Very plain, Quirta. <laughs> so we were just talking about harmoniums and about how um, how you there is a wealth of information on how to play the harmonium. If you want to play some kirtan with your friends at your house or a, or at a program or something, and we were just talking shop about harmoniums and how you can go on YouTube and learn a bunch of different stuff. I was just talking about how I have learned how to play harmonium by watching Waravani. He's got some good stuff and I love his personality. I think he's hilarious. I saw him at Rath Yatra and he is definitely a very cool guy. What do you got as far as harmonium playing? Because I know you play a very good harmonium, Balram. I have seen you. I have been in your kirtans, and they are very nice. That's right. Well, there's the one kirtan there. Oh, yeah, yeah I guess. I guess, yeah. Um, I just remembered I have also watched one of Goravani's harmonium tutorial videos. I forgot he actually does, like, little tutorial things really cool yeah he's he's absolutely amazing uh very very dear soul yes um yeah harmonium i started learning from a devotee in delaware uh gorong prabhu uh he's um freshman right now he's a young young man and he's a genius as far as uh, musical talent, uh, all things Hare Krishna, uh, kirtan related. He's kirtan savant, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and learning the different instruments is just a wonderful way to get deeper into the culture of kirtan. What, what are you doing? <laughs> all right, I'll just... <laughs> is something wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> I get so easily distracted. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was making my my eyebrow go up and trying to figure out which side it was on while I was doing it. <laughs> sounds like a valid thing to do. Yeah. Woo. Okay, so yeah, so the Kirtan culture. Um so maybe some people aren't so familiar and even if you are into the Hare Krishna movement um kirtan culture is itself like it's it's a culture in and of itself right so it's uh something that you may not even have gotten into but it's like oh, there's a whole universe just there in the kirtan it's not just a thing that um we do just like okay we do you know the morning program have our worship service and then we you know do the chanting and then we read and then maybe there's a kirtan here and we just like sit and do that no it's like a whole world you can immerse in uh and you really I feel like you really get that when you are able to lead kirtan. And I think it's an important thing for every devotee 
to at least dip your toes in. I mean, not, we all have different gifts, you know, some people, and that's the wonderful thing about Hare Krishna movement. Like two nights ago, I was uh, speaking with my um, truck driving classmates and teacher. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but the, even the teacher himself is like having open conversation with me, like in front of like in not in not even privately like with the whole group you know like as a group so it's been really uh really fun it's like really cool <laughs> that everyone almost everyone is totally open to talking about anything you know spiritually related and at one point he was like i know i could be the Hare krishna barber like i could be a, a I could be, uh, I could play that role, like in your society. I was just like, no way. <laughs> um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, it, like the fact that he's thinking like that, you know, like I, I'm interested in joining your society, but right now it's still. I mean, it's obviously like you know, kind of like half joking. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, that's the wonderful thing about Hare Krishna. It's such a universal culture that whatever you do pretty much for the most part and Prabhupada says this for the most part with the exception of some you know heinous livelihoods like being a butcher whatever you're doing you can do in our society like as a devotional offering to Krishna yeah yeah. So for some people, it's like, I'm going to be on this, you know, in this sector of things, and I'll participate in the kirtan, but entering into that culture is not really my calling. Um, but the, I guess the point is that the kirtan is the central hub of our whole movement. Right. Harinam Sankirtan is our movement. Yes, it is. It so is. Yeah. it's like this is where you're going to get the um, like core or just the um, the main nourishment. I'm struggling with words here, but like the real heart of the nourishment of your spiritual life is found in Kirtan. Yes. You know, of course, we have, again, everything, everything is, it's all based on service to Krishna. You know, that's everything. Um, spiritual life means service to Krishna. There's no, you know, no two ways about it. So whatever you're doing to be spiritually nourished, you have to render service, right? And that's, we can all understand that. Because life means relationship, actually. Right? We've talked a lot about this. Yeah. So, you know, we all have relationship, um, so many relationships. And the point is, they're either material relationships or they're spiritual relationships. Either way, it's based on service. And the more that you serve together, it's like couples who work out together, stay together. It's like something you know people will say or like but the real thing is like couples you know pray together stay together couples who chant together stay together why because for each of those things you're serving and you could you could insert you know whatever activity of choice but the point is like you're serving together like war buddies why are they so tight they serve together you know so everything that we're doing is serving and so whatever service you, the point is you have to find your service right your service in life your which your service to god yeah. and um seva seva yes seva is a sanskrit word and uh kirtan is is the central hub of that it's our basically to put it in a very simple way our tradition recognizes that the most potent form of seva that will most enliven you and nourish your relationship with God 
is Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. That. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That was the whole thing that Lord Chaitanya was put here, yeah. was manifested to do. Yeah. That was calling. And that was, that's like our great commission, basically. That's yes. our whole deal. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's such a good point because Krishna manifests in this form of Krishna Chaitanya, mm -hmm. of Krishna in the um, role of showing you by example how to serve God. So everything he did was teaching you how to be a servant of God. And he's showing like, well, if you really want to take it all the way, it's <laughs> congregational glorification chanting the holy names it's very simple it's not like like if it was something else he would have done that right but it's like well this is what it is so there's a whole culture in with that and learning musical instruments um is obviously you know part of that so uh and the, the beautiful thing about it what's so wonderful is you don't have to be a musician to enter into these instruments you know music i think musical talent will develop by sincerity and effort right but it's not like you have to be and there are devotees who are you know like Gorvani. i mean he's obviously a musician you know yeah. Yeah. um so many devotees like that but for myself you know gorong taught me some things taught me a few melodies um just kind of showed me how to annotate and then you can just listen to a melody and like find each key kind of one at a time and then learn the melody and then like i can't improvise so much or practically at all on the harmony so i'm i'm stuck with just playing the parts that i know on the keys and if i get lost it's like well you know <laughs> but uh that will still give you enough and then you you can um you just practice singing uh and that's what's yeah it's something very interesting is is that you practice simultaneously you're practicing singing and playing the instrument like you do both at the same time you never just do one you know with the instrument you're always like each note you're singing with each note like as opposed to like learning piano you're just like you know playing the keys but each key like is a you know you're singing. Yeah, we did a really good here. I don't know if Ishvara last night. It was it was he he must have learned some new some new um chords or something because um last night he was playing some really good stuff, like definitely in the major key. He's been he, it it was just amazing last night. It was like he, he, I don't know where he learned them from, but it was really, really good. Uh, nice little cure time we had. I was on the cartels. Yeah, and cartels like super simple, just one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. <laughs> no, three. no, it's not it. <laughs> <laughs> you can still mess them up. <laughs> two, three. No, that's so true, though. You don't have to be a musician to do Harinam, San Kirtan. All yeah, because it's, it's the heart. heart. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just a willing heart. It's making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Yeah, because the actually and the experience, this is an important point. I don't know if any of what I shared was, you know, especially relevant or helpful, but um, the the main point is the experience of Kirtan, because it's an experience. Again, like there should be some taste there. Otherwise, why do it? It's not just like we do this thing, like we go to church or whatever, and we're supposed to sing these hymns and it's apparently it's pleasing to god i'm not gonna know until after i die and then i'll he'll tell me right 
it's like you know jake i really appreciate it every time you it's like you didn't have any like taste or feeling for it but let me tell you i sure did you know no that's not how it works there's a chintya beta abeda is this is a very important point that beta abeda means you are both one with and different from the lord the difference is important because without being different you can't worship you can't have any kind of relationship what to speak of worship you can't have any kind of relationship without duality without two-ness but it's also oneness it's not just that we're different from the lord and he's up there having his experience you know judging us or accepting our worship no he's also one with us he's in our heart like atma it's like you can't separate the atma and the paramatma it's it's atma like he's like the soul of your soul and the soul is not you know that, that's you right and it, talking about these things is kind of kind of gets gray and difficult but the point is that his pleasure is your pleasure they're they're not separate so if the lord is pleased you will be pleased like you will feel ecstasy actually yeah yeah that's what we were feeling last night yeah, that's what it is it's, it's like his off. pleasure yeah, yeah. It's like taking so, a rocket ship but a transcendental rocket ship yes that's what it's like absolutely you yeah you a good kirtan and it's like you are instantly in a different dimension and um it does i will say that the quality uh like you know obviously the harmonium is like the center it's the main instrument it carries the melody and everyone sings which is i guess Harmonium and singing kind of go together. So that's like the main thing. So when you get a good quality here time, it really, it will take you to another world very quickly. However, if, if something's a little off, like maybe you're down on the street and you're just um, doing here time and maybe something's a little off, maybe the vibe's a little off. The way I see that is like when your kids draw a picture and you know it's just like a, a smear you know like a red and a yellow smear and they're like hey look at this beautiful picture and you're like oh you know this is my kids i'm gonna put it up on the fridge and i'm gonna cherish it i think that's how lord krishna thinks about our kirtan and yeah. he, could, he could think that way whether we think it is super high quality or whether it is not super high quality i think you know obviously you know <laughs> He doesn't care. He sees it as like a precious thing that he takes and he puts on his fridge. Now that's not in the Shastra anywhere. That's just like my my idea of of like the music. Well, that now there's a, there's an incredible precedent for that analogy. Like we use that all the time. So I think many of our spiritual masters. I mean, up to the point of you know, there there was a time when we didn't have refrigerators. <laughs> so. You know, they didn't use that same analogy like that way. Oh, it's out of fridge. But it's, um, yeah, I don't know if uh, Lord Chaitanya had a refrigerator. <laughs> but the point, it's such, it's so, uh, you know, and we can extend this analogy of the child with the parent, um, you know, in, infinitely, because that's kind of the nature of our relationship with God. Uh, and just like the essence of it is that we're a very small child. And so what is he accepting? You know, he, you can't expect anything from a child's, you know, as far as like to be materially qualified for anything. And there's no way that we could please the Lord with any material qualification because he's simply not interested in the material energy. And even if he was the standard, like of this plane, you know, the earth like is like, nothing compared to the higher planes like the gandharva the singing of the gandharvas you know the residents of the upper planetary systems what to speak of the gopis in goloka vrindavan the spiritual world their mastery of the arts is like nothing we can even imagine you know there's so no not, way. yeah that's like that's no not way. what he's interested in like high tech most intricate stuff that you're ever gonna be able like we can't even moving 
through dimensions, you know, like yeah. yeah. Just thinking about it, dude. Just thinking about it, man. Just like that. Like, <laughs> and, and and Star Wars when the Death Star blows up. <laughs> just thinking about it. He's so merciful. Uh, this, so merciful. The sound of Krishna's flute. Mm. It's real, dude. Yeah, it makes all of the residents of Rindavan like f- freeze and start like quaking. You know, they they're just stunned. It stuns all the residents of Rindavan. Even the water itself stops moving like the river is just like free you know it's amazing uh anyway yeah the point of it is um is that it's your sincerity of heart that's what krishna's interested because that's the only thing that you have to give him everything else is his but your heart is the one thing that he gives you to be totally yours and that's called free will. You know, you have your free will to do whatever you want independently with it. You know, and Krishna doesn't touch that. He will not touch that. You know, because that's real love. He's like, I have to give you full freedom to be yourself. Everything else, though, that's God's energy. You know, it, this is God, we're also God's energy, but meaning God's energy that he directly or indirectly controls, which is superior and inferior energies internal and external right uh so yeah so the you know harmonium um it's like you don't even have like like you know this point of if it's like a really good harmonium it's like yeah that that can do wonderful things because why because you're able to resonate more smoothly but you can have someone who doesn't know like anything on the harmonium, but they have a deep relationship with the holy name. I mean, like Sachinanda and Swami, he doesn't play the harmonium. I mean, he has his disciples play, but he just, he'll either take a cartel and do something really simple, just like this, you know, or a um, tambourine. But his relationship with the holy name is like bar none. And so it's his, his simple sincerity of heart that will just destroy your heart, you know, like in the most beautiful way, it'll just, you know, shatter. You know, and you'll immediately be in the spiritual world. Um, yeah, so I, I would yeah. really like to see the, the tambourine make, make a strong comeback because. I feel like that's one instrument that's just been kind of like put by Shashika as well. By Shashika leads a lot of kirtans with the tambourine. Let's get that. And they're like some of the most going. fire. <laughs> they they're like so they're basically a bunch of cartels put on a stick is what it is, you know. Yeah. And they're so rhythmic. They're they're I, they're like super super rhythmic, you know. I. I don't know. I, I like I just remember my first like earliest vague memory of Hare Krishna's from like a TV or so show or something like that. Like they were like walking down the street and it, it, to me, it looked like they all had tambourines. And then years That's later, quite a problem, yeah. I, I get into the scene and nobody's got a tambourine. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Why don't you have any tambourines? Come on, man. <laughs> you know? So I, it's just time to bring it back, you know? Interesting. Yeah, because the Kirtan culture itself, I mean, it's dynamic, right? And there's so many places we could we could take that conversation. Not that I'm learning enough and, and all that to go there. Um, but there's a lot... Um, there's a lot of different like ideas, you know, there's people in different, you know, camps with it. Like it should only be like this or it should be like this. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and like, there's some people, you know, like for instance, our community and every community will maybe have like one guy who's like hard line. Yeah. A purist. 
right? There's like the purist, but Wait, um, the, the the you do not don't you dare bring that tambourine in here. <laughs> yeah, or like a djembe, like they'll just leave. <laughs> they will leave. <laughs> Seriously, like, like, like what? Where's the guitar? Where's the bass? You know, yeah, but like the upright bass. You know, <laughs> let's do it. I'm sure Prabhupada wanted just he. Why would he come to the West if he wasn't looking for or wasn't didn't have a desire for a, a wide variety of musical instruments in with the kirtan? I I just think I feel like in the early days, like when they first recorded that famous r- record on Apple Records with George Harrison, there was like all kinds of instruments. I just like broke the whole scene open. Yeah. You know, I, I, I am a person that just does not get along with no men at all. So like, as soon as someone tries to limit me, I'm like, well, I just fight back so hard. I just, I do not like limitations. You know, I mean, that's how, I mean, speaking of limitations, that's how we got this thing called Krishna core that, you know, it's like Krishna and hardcore music put together. I mean, that that is reaching so many people like are, how many kids are you going to reach you know like doing like a very traditional thing i you know i understand it now but that was not going to hit me you know that was just not hitting home when you hear like shelter or 108 or any of these krishna core bands it's like that you understand right away you have a connection you understand where they're coming from so yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to be said about taking there, out of the box. Yes, there's a and there's a few things to be said here, because taking out of the box, um, well, you have conservative and you have liberal, right? If you want to just say like these two wings, on the one, and you don't want to dilute or lose the essence and that is the fear with the conservative wing it's like if you just take it all out of the box it's like okay the box you know may have been a limitation but the essence if you just spill it everywhere then like what do you have the box is a container it's used like to keep it useful so you can use that stuff but now you just like threw it out on the streets and you know, it's like, you can't use any of it. I don't know if that's a helpful, but you see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying though, right? If, yeah, if yeah, you, yeah, if you take it, yeah. you, you lose the essence. And then like, what are you actually transmitting? Because this is the point is that you have in music, you have vibrations, obviously, right? Those vibrations are resonating in the three modes of nature. So if you take Krishna core, the music itself, just materially speaking, is in the mode of ignorance. So you're transmitting that vibration. Uh, it's just it's a simple thing. If you take Mozart, it's you know the mode of goodness. Now, there's nothing spiritual about that. But as soon as you take a devotee who has a relationship with Krishna, and he sings, even though on the surface, it's still in those same modes. The sound, the material sound vibration is still material, but it has been spiritualized by virtue of that soul's devotion. Right? Now, <clears throat> then you have, you know, this idea that, well, shouldn't music just be mode of goodness then? Or, you know, you have these traditional ways of playing music. uh, Because that's tends to be in the mode of goodness. Right. Um, Dude, what you said, we could literally have a whole show on what you just said, because I'm starting to think that there's something to that. It's like it's like what we were talking about the other day with the like this piece of fabric right here. You know, materially, this is just a piece of fabric. But to yeah. me, this piece of fabric is like a powerful prayer shawl that I wear and I feel like it protects me. 
and it does supernatural things to my life. So similarly with music, you know, you take the guitars, da, 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 okay, you know, mode of whatever, you know, you take Mozart, da, 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 mode of whatever. But yes, yes once you get that yeah. holy spirit, I guess you would call it, right? Yeah. Not to sound too Pentecostal. Yeah, it's what you know, once you get that, well, and then yeah. what is the Holy Spirit? You got okay, yeah. The Holy Spirit is Param Atma. Param means transcendental holy. Yes. Atma means spirit. So what are you transmitting? The whole point, spiritual life, is we're trying to transmit or channel the Holy Spirit or the, the super soul. Param also can mean, you know, supra. So Frame. we're we're transmitting something spiritual the material covering becomes insubstantial when you're in that mode now being in that mode is that's the tricky thing because the mode of goodness is conducive is most conducive to that the mode of passion ignorance have like they literally mean that which pull you out of that right so it takes a very strong kind of connection to not get pulled down or out by those modes, you know. So on the other hand, you have the purist, and they're saying, you know, it has to be this way only. And they are erring on the extreme of not understanding what the spirit actually is. They're mistaking the spirit to be the material mode of goodness and so they're also missing the essence wow yeah so true too you know well it's like they've got the best intentions but they're missing the whole point just by virtue of they're yeah. not letting the paramatma do what it wants to do yeah and, you know i mean i this whole thing was a thing in the christian world for years and years and years when they came out with uh christian uh you know heavy rock you know that was a big thing in the 80s you know oh, yeah. and the church is flipped out we're never gonna have guitars you know we are we will never have an electric guitar in this church and all this stuff god created it's, god created music yeah. you know it's the same point like you were saying with um, the speaking in tongues and like the church getting all like, oh, does it need to be interpreted? Yeah. The, the problem comes in when, you know, we, our, our mind takes over, you know, as far as the ability or the inability to discern whether or not it's spiritual. The, there is no way that you can do do that it's you can't measure materially if someone's spiritually connected you just you have to be spiritually connected <laughs> so that person on the stage is either connected and they're transmitting the super soul or they're not and they're just transmitting material vibrations how do i you know who am i to judge that but there's a higher principle in which, as far as kirtan goes, you know, or any kind of devotional service, the mood is to engage everyone in devotional service. So when you take um, a devotional activity, and this is why the purists, the, the purists have a very good point. And I'll, I'll get to like the guitars and that because Prabhupada did make statements on that. Oh. Is that there, the form of traditional devotional mode of goodness um, practices are themselves devotional and they will evoke devotion from the heart. All you have to do is practice it. And it's like, man, this, this gets into it. Kind of tricky thing um 
but it's we just have to trust Rupa Goswami here because Rupa Goswami has said these certain forms are not material. If you circumambulate the Tulsi plants that will evoke spiritual consciousness in you, it looks like you're doing something totally material. You're just walking in a circle, right? How can that possibly, but it's like, you can't, that's the thing, like, how do you evoke some, a spiritual consciousness? If you say, I play guitar, and this is what I do, and I'm going to do this as an offering to God, and it's going to be my heart, it's like, how do you know if you're actually awakening spiritual consciousness, or if you're just getting deeper into your false ego? How do you know that? So you have to receive the gift of spirit. It's not something you can just take. So Rupa Goswami is saying, listen, you do these forms like this. You sing Hare Krishna in these melodies. Like our acharyas have given us bona fide melodies. What does that mean? Bona fide, it means these melodies are in and of themselves devotional. If you just take any, tr any tune from pop culture, pop music, and you just apply Krishna lyrics to it, it doesn't necessarily make it spiritual. It's still that kind of music. Again, it carries that mode of material nature, material energy. It's still passionate music. And just because you change the words, it's like, <laughs> best example is that South Park episode where Cartman tries to get, uh, what is it, Platinum Record? You remember that? I remember that. And he takes all these right. secular songs and just changes it to say like Jesus yes. instead. <laughs> yeah. It's like so cringy, right? Because it's like these songs are even like kind of like degraded. And then like the adults are looking at them and like <laughs> they're like obliged to be like it's devotional, but it, and they're having this like conflict internally. They're like, um, oh, this sounds really bad. <laughs> Because that's the songs are about love, but it's not love. So just changing the word to being like the object, um, you know, the beloved, the energy behind it is still lust, right? It it hasn't you haven't made that switch because you don't have spiritual consciousness yet, right? So the point is we have to receive spiritual consciousness. Rupa Goswami is saying that these particular forms um, are going to evoke spiritual consciousness. You know, these melodies, uh, Naratam Das Thakur was one of our great acharyas, Mahashaya. This is not a normal personality. And he, along with... Uh, a few others kind of um, uh, germinated, if you will, the styles of all the devotional styles of kirtan that are in use um, now. Uh, I don't know if that was a nice way of saying that, or if there's a better way of saying that, but... Um, Basically, there's a few in our in our lineage. There are like three main styles of kirtan, and these are based on the murdanga. Actually, there wasn't a harmonium until uh, very recently. It might have been Prabhupada or Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada who introduced the harmonium. I would have to fact check that. Um, anyway, it was a recent addition. It was used in secular music. Actually, okay, not, not to get into that, but um, it wasn't, a, you know, in the Vaishnava devotional culture because it wasn't one of the instruments that Chaitanya brought. Now, this is a, another very interesting thing because some purists will say only Kartal and Murdunga should be in the Kirtan. So that's why you get like, what do you mean? Like, there's no more tamarines, there's no, no guitars or... Okay, well, so the, it, because so these it, instruments come from the spiritual world. So it, it's not that there's anything wrong with the guitar. Anything. Again, so it's not that there's point, anything. Though, 
at some point the harmonium was I thought the British or the French brought the harmonium into India. Yeah. In like the 1500s, 1600s, something like that. Because yeah. the harmonium base flopped in, in England or in France. I can't remember which one, but the harmonium, like people, they, it was invented and it, and it came out and pe people were like, I, I hate this instrument. But so then the sailors would take it to India and and then and then it became something you know the wisdom um, of the instrument came into full uh, effect the after it was brought to India and everybody started playing it and they realized this isn't that right or or am I way off I don't know that's what I that's what could be right I, but it wasn't yeah. part of the Vaishnava call it might have been part of the Indian culture but that's pop okay. culture you know popular music not devotional music but devotional music means i want to utilize all of my energies um to be in a devotional mode meaning that all of my psychophysical energies are um are spiritualized and so when you use spiritual instruments it's automatically spiritual the kartal is automatically spiritual the murdunga is sri balaram himself it does not it's not a material creation lord chaitanya personally designed this instrument and he's and there, the shastra states that in the spiritual world he said that you know I will manifest in this way. Balaram will manifest in this way. And we will stay on the planet for the entirety of the golden age at, in these instruments. So you're vibrating the Murdunga. It's, <clears throat> it's not that you can't make material sound with it, but you tune in <clears throat> and there's a personality there, you know, wanting to reciprocate with you. So, okay, so for it's the not, golden it's, age? For the golden age, yeah, the entirety of the iron. golden age of the Hari Nam Sankirtan movement. Okay, like we're in the golden 10, age of Kali Yuga. No, uh, that's within the Kali Yuga. There's a ten thousand year golden age. Okay, that Chaitanya. Yeah, so that's a good point. That we I don't know if we've touched on that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this form of Krishna, right, teaching us how to render pure devotional service. He is saying that his spiritual energy uh, will be present on this earth for 10,000 years, starting from the moment that he appeared on this planet, you know, that we'll be able to tune in through him for 10,000 years. And then Kali Yuga will resume. Yeah. So this whole conversation has just gone completely full circle. We started with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and here we are again, because that was his whole thing. This is what it's all about, people. It's all about the San, the San Kirtan movement. That was Krishna. Uh, Lord Chaitanya was Krishna really and he started this whole thing so we would have it in this age, in, in the Kali Yuga age. Uh, what's a yuga? Someone's out there like, what, yuga? Is, is that like a, a European car, a small European car? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> yuga means an age or aeon. <clears throat> it's a measurement of time. Uh, several hundred thousands of years, we can say that. Um, so if you follow Yogananda, you'll have a different concept of what it is because his guru took the celestial uh, numbering, which is a 10,000 year cycle. Whereas um, the, the earth 
uh, cycle is four million years, 4.3 million years. So on Earth, 4.3 million years passes. In the higher planetary regions, 10,000 years passes. So it's, it's not that um, each, each age is only a thousand years, like a literal millennium. <clears throat> Krishna may say millennium, um, and you know, different scriptures, they may say millennium, but generally those calculations of time are, are given in the celestial um, reference. Uh, anyway, te very technical point. Uh, it's a long time. Put it that way. It's a long time. You're not going to live through it. Okay. Uh, but I, there was one more point that I want to just kind of try to tie together here. Um, and hopefully this will help make sense of it. Or just kind of bring it down to practical level. As far as like the use of other instruments. Because again, it's like, who are we to be able to vibrate you know, anything um, like Murdunga, like for me to actually play the Murdunga and be like in that spiritual consciousness, um, like our offerings to God are paltry in comparison to the residents of the spiritual world. So it's a mercy thing, right? That's coming down. And it's whatever instrument that you use, the point is who you're using it for, right? There are spiritual instruments. There are like this quartz as well, the dhoti that I'm wearing. It's not because, no, I'm, you know, resident of Vaikunta and I'm holy and therefore I'm going to wear this. Um, th then it's about me. But it's like, no, I'm accepting the mercy of my spiritual master and that he's given me this culture that these things will help my consciousness to be in that mode of pure goodness whereas if i say no you can just wear whatever you want and i wear jeans actually the the blue should we even get into that <laughs> the oh, dye the dye is a contaminant the blue dye is a contaminant the scriptures say don't wear anything with neil neil is the blue that they use to dye jeans blue so, and it actually content you can't go on the altar if you wear that because your skin is contaminated you're considered impure if you're wearing jeans <laughs> now do we take that and be like you're excommunicated if you wear jeans? No. what was that what did you say oh yeah you with your not all blues it's a it's a certain dye it will bleed um yeah and reds too of course you put red in with your whites, you know, in the washer, it's, it bleeds, right? So it's, it's, a, it's because of the dye. It's not, the, it's not a color thing. Oh. It's just this earth, in order to dye things certain colors, we need different materials. And some materials are impure, whereas others are pure. Like this, this is saffron. This was actually dyed with literal saffron, you know. So that's a pure element. You can take this onto the altar. But if you take something that the scripture says, I'm sorry, but it's impure, it contaminates you. It literally does. I mean, you can run the experiment yourself. You know, it, it will. But, okay, where did I get? <laughs> okay, your clothes you wear. Yeah, that's that not the legit. clothes. It does seem legit. It does. It, the, the clothes but and at the same time, it's not that the clothes that you wear determine your consciousness, but they do influence your consciousness. So if you see someone wearing jeans, you can't just point at them and be like, that person's a sudra. They're in a low state of consciousness or they're a chandala. They're a dog eater or something. They, they have a very low status in society. It's like, you don't know that. That, curse, that person could be a total sadhu. You can't judge a book by its cover. Why? Because the cover doesn't determine the book. Now, the cover does influence the book, right? There is something there for sure. If you see someone wearing a korcha and a dhoti, you can be pretty sure he's a devotee, <laughs> right? But you can't be sure what his consciousness is. So like with the guitar, um, there's this wonderful, wonderful, one of the most wonderful devotees I know, a uh, disciple of Srila Prabhupada named Chit Sukhananda. He lives in southern 
Texas. And he was the one, he was the first one to start or to bring the movement to Latin America. So he, he uh, developed the first Mexican temple community, the first two maybe even. Um, and he plays the guitar like nobody's business, you know. And people ask Prabhupada because they're getting a little envious, right? And this is, you can see what's going on here. It's like, oh, like, why are you envious of this person's using a guitar to chant Hare Krishna? What's wrong with that? You have a problem with that? It's like, okay, good for you. you. You're sticking to the traditional instruments. But this person is using his local instruments. And that's actually what the acharyas have said. As far as the spreading of Krishna consciousness to the whole world, it's not that everyone is going to do what the Indians are doing. That's not the point. You worship the Lord with a, what is it, with a joyful sound, joyful heart, right? You utilize whatever instruments, whatever names of God even. If your local culture, you know, your society, your culture has certain names of God and certain instruments that you glorify him with, use those. The point is that you do it. The point is that you move your heart in that direction, not what the outer covering looks like. You know, so they asked Prabhupada, you know, what, uh, what's the deal with guitars? And Prabhupada said, what was the actual word? He said, if anyone can um, make a thousand people chant Hare Krishna with a guitar, he should play guitar. <laughs> yeah. And a sadhu, you know, Chitsugana was just like, Jai, <laughs> he can do that. You know, um, but you know, he was saying a few things there. First of all, there's no instrument that's not, that can't be like bona fide. You know, if you can sing to it, you can play it. But at the same time, like if you're just playing it for yourself and you're not actually inducing other people to chant, you might be in your false ego. You know, right? Does, does that make sense? Like if, if it's not like, furthering or expanding the the sankirtan movement then you have missed it you have to maybe you know steer a little bit towards the traditional line yeah no i've seen it i've seen it i have i i've seen guys come out you know saying that they're all about kirtan and they are literally just playing kirtan there's like like that they'll charge you to come over to your house or wherever an event and like charge you 150 bucks, 200 bucks to play Kirtan. And it's wow. just like, yeah. And it's, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Like they are not Vaishnavs. They are not. And they'll be the first one to tell you and they'll just come over and they'll play Kirtan for you, for your party or your event or wherever. Yeah. for a fee and that's all it, i mean it is very strange but i mean if there's something that people can make money out of i hate to say this but they're gonna do it you know and they have like no connection at all just no connection and yeah it's sad uh, that's sad i mean how sad is that we're oh, just, yeah. all we're doing is chanting that's all we're going to win a Grammy award just for chanting, you know, yeah. to them, there's no spirit involved in it whatsoever. That's it's purely that's music. Art <laughs> right Next. Yeah. No, this is happening. Prabhupada writes in his books very strongly against this, but in a different context or content, I got maybe it's the same context. Um, the same thing was happening, but actually to a much more extreme degree and in, with a different activity, but also kirtan, but kirtan in the spoken word sense. Kirtan means glorification of God. So people in India, they perform glorification of God, but they're doing it for money. And the way that that plays out is they have a Bhagavat Sapta. You know what Bhagavat Sapta is? No. Sapta means it's a certain number. You know what number that would be? Six. Seven. Correct. Yes. 
something. Seven. So it's seven um, days of reading the Bhagavatam because the Bhagavatam, right, was this book was spoken uh, in seven days from Shukadev to Prakshit for the second iteration of it, which was the most um, mag, uh, magnitudinal, just the, the most profound, I'm trying to make a word up there, the most profound um, I do manifestation it. of it. Make up words. <laughs> was um was the seven day reading of Shukadev to Prikshit, right? That was the the most perfect recitation of Bhagavatam and the most perfect oral reception of Bhagavatam was Shukadev and Prikshit, and they both a- achieved perfection through that. So it's um since then it's been a common practice for people to kind of um reenact that recitation and they'll do seven days of reading but what they do is instead of doing justice to the book as a gradual progression of spiritual enlightenment they just skip to the 10th canto which is actually what we're doing on this show (laughs) but they charge people money for it oh um and and so what's we're not charging but what's the point no, not. is the spiritual we're probably consciousness. costing people money. <laughs> we're costing people. <laughs> we're gonna start paying people to watch our show. <laughs> please watch. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be um, we're gonna be coming out with a calendar on our uh, OnlyFans pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Be yeah. Yeah. just like that because we got to make some money somehow. No, I'm just kidding, no. I'm totally kidding. I'm sorry, well, the consciousness off. it's the same thing as carbon. Oh, sorry, yes, consciousness. Okay. carbon's taking something spiritual and saying, Oh, this is attractive, this is a very attractive thing. Jesus, people are there's millions of people that listen to Jesus, All right? Let me take this. I could make a million bucks off this. Or he's always scheming to make $1 million, right? So, uh, so Krishna means all attractive. If Cartman knew about Krishna, man, he, he would have gotten his ass purified. <laughs> Pardon my language, Krishna. <laughs> yeah. um, so they take the 10th canto, which gets into, this book is going to get into some very juicy stuff, right? Because Krishna is rasa personified. He is juice personified, right? He's the source of all of it, all attractive. So they take like the juiciest stuff in, it actually, it gets way more esoteric and way deeper, but they don't have access to that because it's so confidential. Um, it's not spoken of publicly. Like the, the intimate dealings between Radha and Krishna, they're not even covered in the Bhagavatam. Um, but they take that and they monetize, they capitalize on it and they play on people's emotions because it's part of the culture, it's a cultural thing. People, and this is like Hindus, they'll say, you know, Krishna belongs to our culture. It's like, we have the monopoly on it. Rupa Goswami says, no, Krishna is a monopoly of the pure devotees. You can't claim Krishna as belonging to one culture. If a Westerner, chants Hare Krishna, purifies his heart. Krishna belongs to him, not to you, just because he come, you know, your grandmother told you the story of Mahabharata. You don't own Krishna, you know? So yeah. Prabhupada was very adamant about that because okay. he received a lot of criticism. So he counter-criticized, you know, you people, you don't know anything about Krishna. And, you know, in your culture, you know, and not to, we're not broad terming, he didn't do that, but um you know these different ideologies the misconceptions people have about spiritual life about krishna culture is you know this one thing which is directly relating to what we're talking about is they'll take you know like charging kirtan and stuff they'll do that like 
if these people actually knew, you know, they would go to India and do the Bhagavad Sabda, <laughs> you know, you can make some real money with that, you know, it's like the ultimate thing. You think you've got a good thing going with your, your little kirtan in America. Okay. Just, we got there. Gorangama. This is Lord Chaitanya and his associates. Chai. Yeah. Just so people might have a, a when you see a guy that kind of looks like that, that means you're having a good kirtan. <laughs> yes. If you see a golden form, a seven foot tall form appear in your kirtan dancing ecstatically, then you know you've made it. <laughs> you've That's been successful. You know you're doing right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> Not too often these days, no. Well, back then it happened so much that during the Jagannath Puri, there was, what, like seven different camps? We're running out of time here. But we are. Um, like, there was like, what was it like? like? There was like seven different kirtan parties. Like if you go to the Rath Yatras, there maybe one, depending on the size of it, like New York, there was like three or four, right? And it was so ecstatic that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested in each one of them. You know, so like it was lit, like it, it was lit. Yeah, Jagannath but yeah, the Bhagavad Sabdaha, they they read the tenth canto because they know it's attractive. They know it pulls people's heartstrings as part of their culture, and and it just get people will start crying. They'll be emotional. They'll be like singing. It's completely material. Don't be fooled. Prabhupada was very adamant. Don't be fooled by these rascals. Mm. They're taking Krishna and they're making it material and they're monetizing it. And they're, they're trying to pull at your heartstrings to think that you're having a spiritual experience. So you'll follow them and they'll lead you straight to hell. Hare Krishna. Uh, but yeah, so and that, and then I don't know if we finished that thought of like the guitar and the, yeah, I guess we did. It's so um, we, we can play guitar in Kirtan now. You can play guitar in Kirtan. Okay. That's we got that cleared up. It took us exactly 60 minutes to get, clear that up, and we got it cleared up. <laughs> All right, people. I'm going to close down the show with that thought. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for coming on and, and uh, costing people money with me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, our very good and beautiful friend, R for taking very, very good notes. And thank you, audience on YouTube and out in the interzone planetary systems, picking this up <laughs> and watching this. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Uh, we will end very quickly by doing the Maha Mantra three times. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Jai Jai Jagannath, we will catch you all later. Please like and subscribe. And thank you once again, beautiful people. <laughs>